Welcome back everyone. Uh, this is a new template design. This one is called Media Panels. Uh, so the concept of this one is to create that uh, look of the classic media days uh, with the graphic panels in the background. Um, but for those looking for you know more workflow friendly as far as compositing work, uh, that's the idea behind this. So creating that type of look about using your composite images to do this. Um, so I want to run through this, take a look at the layers take a look at how this is set up. I've set this up with uh, kind of multiple panels to create kind of like this mixed look of repeating elements and things uh, to put some graphics and text in different areas in. Uh, so some of this is pre-set up, but you could absolutely drop in, you know, all of your own custom graphics into each of these spots as well, uh, very easily. And we're gonna talk about, um, you know, some lighting considerations and things like that as we go here. Um, so let's, take a look here at what we've got going on. Uh, so starting at the top of this layer stack, here's our color grading layers. Again, these are always added uh, just to add some color and some punch and some contrast to the overall image. Below that are some facial highlight boost layers. Uh, these are designed to brighten the highlights on your subject's face so that you're still getting that attention onto your subject. Um, we're gonna look at that uh, in just a minute when we get our subject turned on. Below that, we have a, a layer clipped down to this group. Um, so just looking at this, we have the subject group here. So this is the group where the subject will go. We're gonna expand this group. And you can see it's gonna tell you a subject goes right here. And I've got a subject ready to turn on in just a minute. We've got some drop shadowing effects pre-applied to this group. So the subject will pick those up. And then a clip to that is just some darkening of the legs, the lower part of the legs of the subject to help blend into the environment here. Uh, keep going down. This is a little white balance shift. It, it's just really designed to give a bit more realistic color tone uh, to your whites in the image. So that's all that's really about. Uh, this layer here called Brighten Headspace, that's really just uh, meant to um, direct a bright spot in behind the subject's head. So kind of creating that illusion of, you know, a light was above them and it's kind of lighting up a little bit of that background behind them there. So that can just be grabbed and moved around based on how you have your subject in there. Uh, so then we have several shading layers. So this subject shading and then a corner shading, uh, just some additional bottom shading here and here. And that's to create more of that realistic light fall off look into this corner type of scene. Okay, so that's all of those. Then we have some overall texture applied to everything. If we zoom in here nice and close, you can see that texture getting applied, which again is just trying to help create a little bit of the realism to this. And then we get into kind of the meat of this design, how it's set up on these bottom layers here. Um, so what you're gonna find is there's two bottom groups here, the right and left containers. So these are what's containing all of these graphic elements. You really don't need to mess with these at all. Now you can expand these and you can see just how many layers are in there. Uh, but again, we have do not edit because you really don't need to touch those to use the design out of the box. Now above that, in the green group here, so this is where we're gonna place the graphics uh, to update the graphics in the group. So if we expand this, um, again, you don't have to enable these layers. Everything's enabled uh, within the other layers because we're taking advantage of smart objects to make all of these updates. So basically we have eight smart object containers that we can drop you know, eight different graphics or text or whatever into to create um, this, this automatic update to these panels. All right, so the first thing that I like to do though when, when you know, working on a new image is I wanna get my subject turned on. Um, this is gonna allow us to use some of the colors from their jerseys and uniforms and things like that. All right, so subject turned on. Again, you're just gonna you drag around and place your subject, you know, however you'd like. Uh, so I think he's looking pretty good right about uh, here. I like that. All right, so you're gonna see there's some automagic, uh, yeah, automagic is a good word, automagic shadowing happening in behind the, the subject here, uh, just to create that look that they're standing inside of kind of this corner type of layout. And here's some of that bottom shading that's getting attached to the lower legs just to create more of that light fall off uh, down on the bottom there. Okay, and then let's while we're here, let's look at the facial highlight layers. Um, so we've got a couple here. If you expand this, of course, you can always read all the details on the layers to tell you what they're doing. So this uh, highlight boost is for lighter skin. Uh, the above one is for darker skin. 
And so if I click on my layer mask and grab a white brush here, I'm just going to paint over his face. And you can see how that's just lifting the highlights off of his face and giving us more attention here where we really want it. Okay, so the subject's face is not getting, you know, too flat or too dull or anything. Now, that can always be, you know, the opacity can be changed up or down if you want a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Very easy to do. But now let's look at uh, actually creating, you know, our background in here. Um, so what we're going to do is come down to our containers here in green. And let's just start with the first one. What we're going to do, again, these are smart objects. So that means we can just double click onto the layer thumbnail right here. And it's going to open up the first container. So this one I just have a school logo in here. Now remember, you can drop in any graphics that you want here. Uh, this is totally up to you. This is just kind of what I thought looked pretty cool and, and creating a starting point to jump off from. Um, so for this one, let's bring in our dragon logo here. So I'm going to resize this up to fit here a little bit better and click apply. And again, you could delete this one out, turn it off, anything you'd like to do. But all we need to do now is click X on this document. It asks if we want to save it. We're going to say yes. And you can see it's already updated that panel in every location that it exists in this background. All right, so that's why these containers are set up, so it can automatically do all this very easily. So container two, we're going to pop that open. I just have this set up as a text layer. Again, you could drop in custom graphics into here, school logos, other school materials, whatever you would like to do. Uh, again, I just have this set up as some, as some text. So let's update this. Um, all right, since they're the dragons, we're going to update our text here. And let's get this aligned, centered. There we go. So now we want to update our colors. Um, one of the things that's, that you can do, you know, if you're working on colors, is just temporarily drop your logo, you know, down into this container and use that as your sample. So we've got, like, I've got a background color here. Uh, let's say I want to leave that white, but the text, I want to click this and make this that blue. That just allows me to sample it that way. All right, so then we can just delete that logo out. Click our X, click Save, Yes and it updates all of those panels automatically for us. So that's kind of the beauty of this one. So let's go to container three. Again, I just have some repeating text set up by default. You could drop graphics in if you wanted. This repeating text also set up as smart objects within this. So you can see we've got a folder here of all the repeating lines that we don't need to touch, but we just need to edit this top one here. And again, it's a smart object. So we're gonna edit by double clicking onto this smart object and then we can simply double click in here and type our new text. So let's do dragons. And you just want to fill this space up. So I'm going to keep going. And I want to type the whole word until it, you know, kind of moves out of the edges of this frame. Uh, now the other thing that we want to do is we need our, our blue. So what you can do also is just use your eyedropper tool and say sample like a jersey color so it sets to your foreground color. So now if I come back to my text and click here, I can just grab that foreground color like that, click OK. When I close this, I ask if we want to save it. I'm going to say yes. And I need to get back to here. So you can see it's updated all of that text and color within this container. So now I need to close this container, save it, yes. And now we've updated all of those panels. And you can see how easily it starts to come together as we update each of these. Next container, I just have some more repeating kind of text in a different format. Again, feel free to customize. But I'm going to double click here to update our initials. So let's do this. Now you do want to make sure if the letters extend past the frame on this one to transform this so that they're just inside of the bounds. Okay, that's going to make sure nothing gets cut off. And then let's just leave this one in black. I like that. So close, save, yes. And again, we're just going to leave this one white and black for now. Close, save, yes. So now we've updated that panel. So our next one, I, I just set up an inverted version of this because I think those inversions look really cool and kind of graphic designing. 
So let's change our background color. Let's set it to our blue and let's just leave the white here, but we'll update our text by coming up here to our top smart object, double clicking in here, typing the new initials. Let's get that seated just inside of our canvas. Close this, yes, close, yes. And now you can see we have another panel set up. So number six, let's come down again. So I just have this you know, set up as another kind of custom um, type of text element here. Uh, so let's do this. Set this area code here. So we'll do you're in the 304. Let's change this all up to, uh, actually, let's leave that white and let's change our text to the blue. Okay, and same here, blue. All right, let's close this and save it. All right, that looks good. You can see those panels are updated. We got two more to go here. So this one I have just pre-built in with all 50 states. So if you like this look of having a state and kind of a star marked off with the school location, um, that's what this is all about. So we could turn off Illinois here and let's go up here. It's in reverse alphabetical, turn on West Virginia. Uh, let's get our star moved over to the Charleston area. There we go. And so then we can collapse this and we can set our colors here. Uh, so on this one, let's say, let's leave the background black. Let's change the state color. You can see this is just a fill color clipped to this group. So that's gonna create that color cast on the state. Um, so let's set this to our blue and let the stars same way. We've got a color clip to that. Let's make the star white. And if we close and save, you can see we now have that panel updated and we just have one to go. So our last one, I, I like the look of the inverted logo. So if your school has an inverted logo as well, a lot of times they do. Um, you could just drop that in. Or again, you could drop in any custom graphic text, uh, whatever you wanted right here. Let's click apply, close this, save, and boom, there you go. All of the panels updated very quickly and very easily. This design is, um, you know, it comes pre-formatted in one two ratio two three four five and five seven so it's going to make all of your most standard print sizes very easily just by loading up the file that you want uh, you could always come in with your crop tool and crop images down you know right from here if that's what you wanted to do uh, but again this pre-formatted files are there to speed you up on that journey and let's talk about really quickly what i think is um uh, a good kind of lighting uh, technique to think about for this and so you're going to find in that download I'm going to actually get back here to what I need all right so in that download you're going to find a little uh, lighting diagram let's come up here and I'll just drop that here all right so for this specific uh, template Normally, what we like to do is edge light our subjects so that that edge light is brighter than our main light. So we get those really nice high um, kicker lights, you know, carving them out from the background. It works with most designs, looks really good. For this one in particular, because we're kind of creating this idea they're standing in this little corner set up here, you wouldn't have those bright edge and rim lights. So you'll take notice on this one. You know, the kicker, you're going to want your, if you're shooting for this specifically, knowing you're going to use this backdrop, you want to make sure those kickers are like the same value as your main or a little bit darker even. Okay, so you're not getting those super bright highlights back here, but everything's kind of falling within the same value or even a little bit darker. Um, that's going to create more of that realistic effect when you drop them into this background that they're kind of in this little area where light can't get in, you know, around the sides of them and things. All right, so hopefully you'll find that this is, you know, it's pretty straightforward once you dive in, but there is some complexities in here. It did take me, you know, a bit to get this set up just right. Um, but it, it, I find it's, it's pretty easy to use to create this kind of media day panel type of look 
and I hope that you find it just as easy as I do and that you get a ton of use out of this. Uh, so I'm going to look forward to seeing you on the next one. Uh, have fun playing with this. I can't wait to see what you guys create.